I am in search of something this year. Something better. From pens, to knockoffs, to sharpies, to more sharpies, and to traditional. This medium has always been done in black, and your mistakes are permanent. Or are they? Throughout this month, I will be testing the four best white inks out there, putting them through their own rigorous tests, as I want to find out which of these is the best white ink of them all. Let the best ink win. Continuing our look at white ink and staining my desk as you can see, we'll be taking a look at the Dr. P. H. Martin's Bleed Proof White Ink. Now this is one I got at Michael's, a lot of people recommended it to me, and I have used it before in a few experiments in my sketchbook. So if you were actually paying attention during my sketchbook tour, I did use this in one of the sketches. So let's dig into this and see what's in it. All right, so we got the Batman sketchbook. I've already made our marks with the appropriate tools. So let's open this thing up. I got a new cup of water too, so we're, we're good. I shook it up already. Huh, it's stuck. Ah, there we go. Jesus, man, th oh, this thing was on tight, and I'm a strong dude. All right, test it on the Sharpie King. I can say it's, it's a very rich. Not super smooth, but it's very rich. I like that. And it's covering it really well. Man, it almost one coat. Look at that, one coat. Almost completely covered the Sharpie King. And you know, Sharpie is, is a good uh, test because they're really thick and rich. Now I'm curious if it's gonna lighten up with the uh, other one, like the other one did. These are by the same company, so you know, you never know. All right, so now let's try the Sharpie Chiseled. Uh, personally, I do enjoy how it actually feels. Like I like the the rich feel of it. Not as smooth as the other one, but very, very, very rich, very rich in feeling. You can see it goes down really well. Very easy to spread. Can't wait to mess with the uh, the dip pen. That's gonna be really fun. I feel like that's gonna be an interesting uh, interesting experience. But yeah, you could see now. You could tell. It's not the same whiteness as the actual paper. So on camera, it's a little more exaggerated, um, but you know, that's not bad. I like that. So it covered the chisel really well. So let's try the pen. That's nice. I like that. I, I don't even need to do a second coat. It's really covering it all. All right, now let's try the Sharpie paint. So far, this has been my favorite. And again, these, these type of inks are very out of my comfort zone because I normally don't uh, you break out the pen, you know, the fountain pen, and I don't break out the paintbrush to do my inking. So this is really out of my comfort zone. But, I mean, if I'm getting results like this, I'm okay with that. I also am worried, though, that this may be pretty uh, hazardous to the health of your brushes because how rich it is. Let's try cleaning our brush. Because of how rich it is, I'm wondering if the fibers of the brush are really gonna, really gonna try and eat out of it, if that makes sense. Really gonna try and dig in there and get in the way of things. Uh, just clean my brush, doesn't look too, too bad. So I don't think we got a, a health concern, but it's something I will say, do clean your brushes thoroughly after using this. Not covering the master marker as well, but it's not bleeding, which I like. Uh, if you remember with the previous ink we tried, it did, because uh, it's more watery, it did actually really mess and distort the ink because the ink was water-based. It's interesting. You could still see a bit of it underneath. Not, in, not much in camera. On person, it's a lot more clear. But second little layer right there fixed that problem right there. Same thing here. Starting to bleed a little bit, but you can go over it. So literally looking like one, maybe even two layers is really getting everything covered, which is super nice. And I gotta say, again, this is a very rich, rich ink I really enjoy. Sharpie King, the Sharpie Chiseled, Sharpie Pen, Sharpie Paint, and the Master Micro Pen Set. All three, really good. You can see, you can barely see anything through them. That's impressive. So now our two left are the Dollar Tree 
ones and the Pigma set. So let's do that. Now, one thing I'm noticing is the Dollar Tree one I'm wondering if it's because it's water-based. Uh, previously, it did bleed and it did uh, really spread out. But um, both this one and this one seems like it's going to need two layers to really, really cover it all. So I, I do believe that's because it's a water-based opposed to an alcohol-based. But that's interesting. Really, I thought it would be the opposite because you know they were cheaper. They were cheaper alternatives. But no, no, they uh, they actually need a few little extra coats. Uh, so that's interesting right there. It's uh, also a lot less curling of the paper, if you notice. There, the paper's not curling as much with the previous one. I'm going to pull it out for you guys to see. Um, really, really curled the paper when it dried. So uh, these are pretty much dry. So I'm curious as how that's going to affect the paper, because I don't think it will that much. Again, it's bleeding a little through, a little more than I would have liked. Um, looks really good on camera, though. In person, you could tell it needs a, two coats. So I'm, I'm really shocked that the Sharpie took really just one one coat and this one's taking two. That's interesting. You can really see almost like it disappears, especially on camera. On camera, it looks amazing. So here are our results. Now I gotta say, I'm very happy with the Sharpie ones. Those were pretty impressive. That's no easy feat. And it was surprising that the Master and the Dollar Tree ones uh, needed a few extra coats to cover. I am glad they didn't spread though, and that's just because of water base. And then the Pigma, you could see a little bit through in person. On camera, you can't tell at all. So that's pretty cool. I gotta say, I'm actually really impressed with the quality of this. It really is living up to its name about how it's bleed proof. Uh, so, so far, it's really good. Uh, we're gonna put this to the side and break out this black piece of paper. We're gonna try that again. So let's just take a little bit. There we go. It's just not working. Look at that. It's almost like a paint. Um, you know, it's an ink. Oh, well, oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, that's, see, that's why, <laughs> that's why it's, uh, it's hard to open because stuff like that happens. It's got a bit of a scratchy look. If you notice when I go down with my pen, see how it streaks. Now you could probably use that for some cool effects. Uh, so I'm not gonna hold that against the ink. That just means I have to dip more frequently, which I'm not gonna complain about, but it's doing really well. Really handling the paintbrush very well. And I'm just using a cheap uh, Dollar Tree paintbrush. So it's not like it's anything like amazingly high quality. Uh, but we'll put the paintbrush aside and we're going to now use the dip pen. So let's do that. Okay. So looks like you really can't really can't get a line with it. That's weird. So that's concerning. See, I'm, I'm dipping it almost all the way in and I can barely get a line longer than that. So that's concerning. Now I wonder if that's the type of tip I have for this pen. Let's see if we can get a different one. All right, so I have a different pen nib and let's give that a shot. Maybe this will work better. So I have to continually dip the pen. And even then I'm not getting good lines. So that's a concern. That is a concern right away. Uh, that I'm not getting good, really good anything. I think we've done some good testing. I think we've done some good trial and error. Uh, now what I wanna do, I'm gonna throw this away and we're going to actually do a piece of artwork with this to really test it. Now I have this piece I did of Batman. It was inspired by the Dark Knight Master Race by Frank Miller. This cover was done by Andy Kerber. It is a beautiful cover. The comic book kind of sucks, but it's a beautiful cover and mine is autographed by Andy Kerber. So that's uh, really cool. I got some when I went to Kerber school. I love this cover, one of my favorites that he's done. And I did my own rendering of it. Uh, trying to make it look more like Batman the Animated Series. Uh, so, this is my inspiration. And I'm going to attempt to basically ink this using only this white ink. I'm not going to give myself any other tools outside of the white ink, a paintbrush, my pen, 
paper towels, and my water, which is right here. So yeah, let's do this. Alright guys, so I'm first going to talk about the piece and then I'm going to talk about the ink. So this piece, I was very happy with how it came out. I did cheat, I used a sharpie to clean up some of the places that the ink splotched on. Uh, it is messy, it got on my hand, it got on my desk. Um, long with the bat did not come out very well, so I'm actually going to photoshop that out. But this piece will be available for sale on my ArtStation account. Just for a dollar you can get a digital copy of all my artwork that I post there. Like I said, it's all a dollar. But I am happy with how this piece came out, so that's good. Now, in terms of the ink, the ink itself, I do like it. It's really good. It's really rich. It's got a very, it goes down really smoothly and very, very richly. However, it works best with a paintbrush. Um, I had to switch up nibs, and even then you could see that I really didn't want to go down with the nib. This was not a fun, this was not an easy process. But with the paintbrush, it was. It was very smooth. It went down really well. It looks really good. And on camera, you can't even see any areas where some black is peeking out. In person, you could see a few, just a little. But for the most part, I am really impressed with how this goes. Now, I do have to factor in how you actually use the ink with my rating system. The fact that it goes down so well with a paintbrush, however, the fact that putting it down with the nib is so troublesome, I have to say that this, on a scale of one to four, this is a two. Not perfect, but really, really good. Definitely better than the India white ink, but the Bleed Proof white ink is one that I do recommend for painters and for people who are in depth in using a brush. Definitely one that is really good. And something that I do like is that you can see that it went over at least on camera, so it actually shows surprisingly well on camera, I'm shocked. But you can see that you can go over it again with some black ink, so that's good, that's something I was also looking for. 
Uh, I would not put this in a pen. It's very thick and rich, so it's definitely going to cause issues. But overall, again, this is a two. And if you do like using brushes with your art supplies, definitely pick this one up. This would be good. It's almost like a paint, so you could probably paint with it too. But that's my review of the Dr. PHM Martin's Bleed Proof White Ink. Let me know what you guys think of not only the art piece, but also of this ink in the comment section down below. Let me know if you like my artwork, and let me know if you would pick this up, if you've used it, if you like it, what are some of the things that you ran into when you were actually using it to make your artwork, because I would appreciate some feedback. And we'll continue our look at white inks with the pen inks next.